It's good to be with you. And um, just so I'm clear, my pronouns are she, her, and hers. I mean, I can't remember a time that they've not been important to me. When I was district attorney of San Francisco, I started victims assistance program for members of the trans community because there is so much about when somebody has has been assaulted or has been victimized in any way that 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 prevents them from coming forward if they feel they're going to be judged or harshly judged. And I know this is true. And and so I created this division of my office way back when. I mean, I was elected in 2003 to make and staffed it with members of the trans community to make sure that that people who had suffered wrongdoing knew that there was a safe place to the, for them to go where they would not be judged, where they would be treated with dignity, and where we would then make sure that they received equal rights under the law. I mean, Gwen Arahu, what a tragic, what a tragic story. She, uh, she was 17, um, horribly, horribly treated. And, um, and what, ha- what, ha- what was happening around the country is that um, trans women were being killed and in particular trans women of color, and we know right now there's an epidemic in particular around black trans women. Um, and then what would happen is that if um, the, the police responded, if there was an arrest, if somebody was charged, then there would be a trial, and the person who did the killing would say, ah, I freaked out. I panicked. And then, so they call this defense, right, as a way to say, I didn't know what I was doing, therefore I'm not guilty. They would call it the trans panic defense or the gay panic defense. And I knew it was happening around the country. And at the time, I was um, elected DA. I was the first woman to be elected DA of San Francisco, the first woman of color to be elected DA in a state of 40 million people. And I said, we've got to do something about this. So I decided to create a training for prosecutors on how to defeat the trans panic defense. I have a long-standing awareness based on my experience in the community of knowing the lives that people are living every day that are burdened with fear, that are burdened with, with, with unequal access to everything from employment to a response from from law enforcement to access to health care, to access to housing. I mean, it covers the gamut. So look at my record to know. When I was attorney general, I learned that the California Department of Corrections, which was a client of mine, I didn't get to choose my clients. And there was a specific case. And when I learned about the case, I worked behind the scenes to not only make sure that that transgender woman got the services she was deserving. So it wasn't only about that case. I made sure that they changed the policy in the state of California so that every transgender inmate in the prison system would have access to the medical care that they desired and need. And I believe it was not only, I know it was historic in California, but I believe actually it may have been one of the first, if not the first in the country, where I pushed for that policy in a Department of Corrections. Um, So you can just look at all the work I've done over the years to know. I feel very strongly about this, and at its core, it's a civil rights issue, it's a justice issue, um, and it's an issue of, of humanity.